He's, if you let him guide you. The angel of the Lord is a provider. I, find, I read in 1 Kings 19, 5 through 8. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose, and he did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. Elijah learned a lot from the ministering angel of the Lord. <clears throat> Let me tell you about Mike Martin. Now, you may have heard of Mike Martin, but I'll tell you, this is a most outstanding, fantastic story. And it, uh, uh, God, this is a man that established a King Garden School in North Seattle. Mike felt like the Lord had told him to take option on some land to start a school and a radio ministry in Seattle. Now, this particular Sunday, they went to church as usual, and he was preaching, and as they had absolutely nothing in their house to eat, absolutely nothing in the house. When they got home from church, his wife went in the living room to sit down. Mike said, when are you going to set the table? She said, for what? We don't have anything to put on the plates. He said, Mother, set the table. And so she went in and set the table. And uh, then they called his son and the wife to the table. The three sat down. And Mike thanked the Lord for the food that he was going to provide for them. Before he finished his prayer, the doorbell rung. His wife answered the door, and there stood a man and his wife who were members of their church. They were called suddenly out of town to a sick relative, so they brought their entire meal over to Mike Martin and his family. God hasn't changed from Elijah's day until this day. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise his name. Well, friends, I told you this story again. I'll not tell it to you again. But when we were living in Bellingham, Washington, I was associate pastor of a church. They couldn't afford to pay me a dime because they were broke. I couldn't get a job because I didn't know how to, I uh, wasn't a commercial fisherman, and I didn't know nothing about logging. And all we had was a, about four cups of white navy beans, and I put them on the stove with an old wilted carrot and an old beat-up potato, put it on low and waited for it to cook for all night long. And the next morning, there was a knock on our door, and a man stood there with a, a Safeway sack, two, la two loaves of bread sticking out of it, and I thanked him very much. Walked back in the house, took the loaves out of bread, two loaves of bread out, there was a ham and a $20 bill. Praise his name. Now, we saw that happen in our lives, and I could tell you many more, but uh, that wouldn't be what we're here for. Angels protect us, in Psalms 34, 7, and the angel of the Lord encamped around about them that fear him and delivered them. You have evil habits. You're doing things that does not not please God. The angel of the Lord will deliver those who love God and fear him. Now, Here's the angel's direct activities, Acts 8, 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south, under the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is in desert. Hey, Philip was having a great revival in Jerusalem. But all of a sudden, the angel of the Lord said, I've got somebody I want you to meet. And so he immediately left, and he went down there, and he saw this Enoch riding in this chariot. And he was reading uh, uh, from the scriptures, and Philip asked him if he understood what it meant. He said, no, no one's ever sat down and talked to me about it. So Philip got up in the chariot and preached the gospel, and, and pretty soon the Ethiopian believed, and he said, well, where can I find, get baptized? He said, well, if we find enough water, we will. So they did. He baptized this Enoch, and the Spirit of God whisked him away. You see, those things don't happen, they sure do. The angel of the Lord has uh, power to comfort you. Acts 27, 23, and 24. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whom I am and whom I have served, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and, lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. 
Well, I remember the day the doctors discovered I had a lung tumor. I got on my knees and confessed to the Lord that I was frightened. The angel of the Lord also spoke to my heart, and it was like this, Fear not, Cecil, I am with thee. Oh, friends, what a comfort. Well, the doctor said I wouldn't live, but he didn't know what he was talking about. God had intended for me to be here tonight on this radio broadcast, which I'm so thankful for. To the unbeliever, the angel of the Lord also speaks. They told people of their destruction, told them of a curse, a pestilence, sudden death, persecution. Now here's what the angel of the Lord did. He announced Jesus' conception. The angel of the Lord told of Jesus' birth. And the angel of the Lord proclaimed his resurrection. The angel of the Lord accompanied him to heaven. Yes, there's much that can be said about the angel of the Lord, and they are real. One thing a angel of the Lord can't do, and that's how to tell a person how to be saved. God left that up to you and me. Let me ask you, are you doing that now? Are you telling your friends and your loved ones about Christ? The other day, you know, I talked to a, a friend of mine who was a Christian. Him, His wife were down to Acapulco, whether his wife still not in too good a shape, but she's sure better than she was. And he said, you know, see, uh, my daddy, who's an alcoholic, he's 64. They've given him six months to live. I said, you know, remember when I talked to you about that? And I said, you've got to talk to your dad about the Lord. He said, Cecil, I have talked to my dad about the Lord, but he won't listen. All right, I said, then I'm going to have to call him and talk to him because both of us were alcoholics. I can understand what he's going through, and I'm sure I could. He said, well, I would appreciate that. Now, friends, you pray for me that when I get a chance to call this man, that I won't talk to him about how evil the evils of alcohol or talk to him about coming and join a church or getting baptized or something like that. Tom Baird told me that my greatest need that morning at 3 a.m., was Christ. He informed me, according to the scriptures, that I was a sinner and I'd come short of the glory of God in Romans 3.23. He assured me that Christ died on the cross of Calvary for my sins, that he loved me, and that's where him and I had a parting of the ways. I said, Preacher, there's no way that you'll ever convince me that God Almighty loves me, an old drunk. But you know what? I've, I didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit just kept Drugging at my heart, tugging at my old heart. Oh, I wanted to believe that preacher. I wanted to believe him so bad. Well, I'm sure the ministering angels of the Lord would, had, had helped me stay there. until. And then we read about Nicodemus, of course. I didn't understand why, how he could be born again. But the Holy Spirit of God kept tugging at my heart and kept tugging at my heart. And you know, friends, I don't know if you believe this or not, but I really felt in my heart that was the last opportunity I was ever going to get to accept Jesus. I really honestly felt if I didn't accept Christ that morning, I would die and go to hell. I really believed that. So finally I said, well, preacher, if I, if I asked the Lord to forgive me and save me, would he give me back my wife and kids? He said, oh, Cecil, I can't promise you that. Well, I said, will he give me back my business? He said, I can't promise you that. Well, I said, Preacher, what can you promise me? He said, I'll promise you on the authority of Almighty God if you repent of your sins and ask Christ to come into your heart and save you that he will deliver you from the curse of alcohol and he'll make a man out of you. And when he said that, I thought, Oh, if only my kids love me, if only my wife loved me. I love them. I had a sure dumb way of showing it. But I wanted to, I wanted to be a man. And so, without knowing any theology, I knelt there on my knees and I said, Lord God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Lord, come into my heart and save me. Now, I'm telling you, friends, God did just that. The Bible said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become as new. I came home, I begged, I groveled, I cried. I asked my wife for one more chance, and I'll tell you the ministering angels of God must have convinced her 
that I really meant business. Well, we'll soon be celebrating our 55th wedding anniversary, all because of a wonderful Savior. The only reason that I'm on this earth right now is to tell others about Christ. It isn't my fancy preaching that does it. It's in my sincerity because, friends, I know what the Lord did for me, and what he did for me, he can do for you. If you've got a husband that's an alcoholic or wife, you want to call me and talk to me about it, I'll be more than happy to talk to them on the phone. I really mean that. And I'd come to your house and talk to them, too, if that's necessary. Well, friends, listen. If you're not a Christian tonight, and God's Holy Spirit is tugging at your heart, and the angel of the Lord is tugging at your heart, would you bow your head with me right now and, and ask Christ to come into your life and to save you? Here's a prayer, and I don't want you to pray if you don't mean it. Dear Lord, I confess that I'm a sinner. I'm sorry, Lord, for all the things I've ever done to you and to my loved ones and my friends. This way I know how, Lord, I'm opening my heart and receiving you as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to get on the phone and call 303-840-2992. 303-840-2992. I'll not call you at home. I'll not embarrass you. I will not uh, sit down right and ask you for any money. I don't do that. I don't care where you go to church, beloved. I'm concerned where you spend eternity. Don't be mad at me because I care. Because Jesus cared more than anybody. He died in the cross of Calvary for you. Okay, my phone number 303-840-2992. I'm waiting for your call.